Green friend, Timberlake here. Hope you've enjoyed this month of Sudoku. It's coming to a close. I got a great treat for you. This is an analysis video, and it's from a Kraken a Cryptic. It was called one of the best classic Sudokus ever. So, what is it about this puzzle that you're looking at that Simon remarked, this is sick. This is absolutely stunning. And he called it one of the best classic Sudokus ever. Well, we'll find out. I've included one pause the video moment and two what if moments to look at some alternate solving paths. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, so Simon starts out uh, just doing some simple cross hatching and scenario notation. You know, scenario notation being where you're going to mark just two uh, spots in any particular block uh, for, you know, two, if there's only two candidates remaining. And so first he notices this three because the threes cross columns, uh, rows two and three. And he kind of works his way down uh, column eight. There's another three. And then he looks across and goes, okay, there's only two places left for three right here. And then next he's like, oh, I see two sevens. And I see this seven coming down. So there's only one spot for a seven, block eight. Uh, he goes back to the threes. You know, he looked here, sevens, came back, threes, two spots for a three right there. And two spots for a three right here, right? Because there's three in column six and then he also notices and this is really key sometimes you'll see kind of how this naked pair works or these pairs work uh, the three and eight and then the three and eight so now you create yourself it's a hidden pair but you know when you mark it down now it's a naked pair and now no other candidates can be in these two cells and so puzzles like this that are usually really good um, Snyder solves you'll see a lot of these hidden naked pairs popping up after that, he's able to use this as kind of a pointing pair to solve this eight. And then, which also means he could remove that and solve that for a three, right? Okay, and after doing, uh, he looks at the sevens coming down and the nines. And you'll see that he places two sevens here. But in actuality, he could solve for the seven right now. So this is my first pause the video moment. Pause the video and solve for a seven here in block eight. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations for those of you who spotted. And those of you who just want to enjoy the show, you can actually solve for the seven for right here in row seven, column four, because this seven takes up those two spots. Uh, Simon didn't see that right away. He just marked the sevens and moved on. Okay, so after the sevens, he notices, hey, this nine's coming down as well, and he marks those nines. And so now he creates a naked triple here in block eight, because now you just have a two, five, and six, and he ends up marking those. Uh, which creates a restriction here. You know, there's a four and a one left. He sees the four, so he's able to solve for the four and remaining of column six, and then solve for the one as well. Gets his eye on the seven, says, okay, there's a restriction on the sevens coming up here. So he puts the sevens down. And then notices that, oh, hey, the sevens are pointing. Now he sees that he can solve this for a seven and solve that for a nine. Okay? After that, he finishes off column four because really you're looking for these restrictions. And so if I can make more restrictions, I'll do that. And after putting this five and a nine, he focuses up here. And so, oh, there's a four and a five coming across. There's only two places left for a four and a five in block two. So he marks those. And then once you see that this is, you know, like hidden pair four and five, that seven is no longer valid, so he's able to solve the seven right away. After solving for that seven, uh, he makes more sevens looking over here in block one and marks those. And then he looks at row one and he says, okay, what are the restrictions here? We've got a five, six, and nine. Uh, and he puts the candidates here in row one, column two, and says, oh, this might be helpful later on. I always find this amazing. He will find these restricted where there's, you know, a by value cell and ends up coming handy. And you'll see later why this is such an important cell that he just filled in. From there, he comes down and notices that uh, the two and a six cut across in row six. So he's able to go to the two six will go here and he can solve this for a one. So one and then he puts the two six naked pair in there. After that, Simon looks across 
row six and looks for restrictions goes oh there's this eight affecting this row just like it's affecting that row and so he puts the five nine there and then he kind of notices hey this is the same kind of pattern the same cells are filled in across rows one and six and the eights restricting on both and he discovers an x-wing and so you can see the x-wing is actually right here in rows one and six columns three and nine so an eight has to be either there or there or there or there and i've made x-wing tutorial i'll put a link right now you can check that out but this is a huge find in this puzzle and and simon by putting that six nine and five nine kind of drew his eyes and say hey, this eight's really restricting the effect on this rows one and six and so i'll mark those eights to kind of show that's an x-wing uh, after that uh, he looks across and goes all right because i have this x-wing eights can no longer be here and so now the eights are restricted along with the seven coming across row seven so now this is a seven eight naked pair and this is going to be huge again because once you make like uh, naked pairs like this then you're going to restrict the candidates in this column and in the rest of block nine and now he's able to actually solve for a one here he notices uh, with the seven and eight and the rest of the candidates playing in this is a naked single one and so he solves that for a one and that's probably a, a really great way to kind of get moving in this puzzle you know be able to spot this x-wing really made some progress so now i'm going to go back and go well this is our first weapon what if he didn't find the x-wing what could he have used to solve to get forward in this puzzle and i'll show you that right now so here's a situation uh where he found the x-wing but what if simon didn't find that x-wing where else could you look in this grid well for starters there is a naked single one right here so if you're a look you know two three four five six seven eight nine that can be a one and that would be helpful but believe it or not um you do need to find an x-wing to move forward in this puzzle and the x-wing that simon found is not the only one so i'm going to show all the candidates and we'll go to the eights and what you're going to see here is that there's actually two different x-wings so the x-wing that simon found is right here but there's another x-wing right here and so it what he could have done is, is start looking out around the grid and then he might have noticed that eights were the same two spots in columns one and seven and if you notice that you could make eliminations across this way and by doing that you still end up with uh, the eights being a claiming pair down here in column nine and so you can get rid of those eights right there and then you know that the sevens are limited there as well so you can get rid of the nines and you have you know that same uh, naked pair that simon found and from there you can move on with the rest of the puzzle let's go back to the original solve and after that he comes down here and looks in block nine and he says, oh, there's only two, you know, because this nine is only two spaces left for a nine. Now it's going to create a pointing pair of nines. And, and he looks for this for a while. He makes another pointing pair of nines. He says, okay, nines are here, and now there's no nine that can be there. So the nines are restricted right here. He stares at it, and then he says, his famous line, this is sick. It's absolutely stunning. So this is where he has that eureka moment. Because what he notices is now with this play across here, these nines coming up here, this nine right here, you're going to create a pointing pair of nines right here, and it's going to create a bunch of pointing and claiming pairs across the grid. And so these two nines now are a pointing pair, it means nines can't be there. So now they have to be uh, in row one up here in block one. But what you see is nines are restricted here in block one, they're restricted here in block four, right? Because they can't be there which means nines now have to be in column one in block seven and since this is nines right here it's going to create a three nine 
naked pair. And this is huge, because after finding this 3-9 naked pair, he's able to kind of start working through some more restrictions across row 7. So this brings us up to our second what-if moment. Well, what if he didn't find these 9s and create this naked pair? Where could you have gone from there? And I'll show you that right now. So if Simon didn't find this pointing pair of 9s, is there anything else he could have done in this puzzle to move forward? Well, um, the answer is no. There, there's very little you can do with this puzzle if you did not find that pointing pair of nines. So I will show you that right now. One thing you could look for is in the twos. Um, you could go through here and you notice there's that two, four naked pair, right? And so you could get rid of the two and the four right here and the two right there. And what that would do is it'll clear up um, these two to make that a, uh, a conjugate pair, right, with a strong link. And if you came here with the twos, you come down, you have an empty rectangle shape in, call, in block three. So you come down here, connect to these twos here, and then wherever this, uh, in this column meets this row, you can eliminate a two. So basically, either two is going to be one of these two spots, and that can't be a two, or it'd be right here, which eliminate the two right there, and you have a two right here. Right? Empty rectangle. I'll put a link to my empty rectangle tutorial if you want more information on that. But the problem is, even if you remove a 2 from right here, it just doesn't do anything for the solve. Uh, I did want to show you what happens here. And remember, uh, Simon already got the point where this was a 7-8 naked pair. So I'm just kind of clearing out all that. So that makes it a 5-6-9 naked triple. But what you see is this is a pointing pair of 9s, right? And that's what Simon found. And so when you see the pointing pair of nines, you're eliminating all these nines. And once you eliminate this nine, it's like, oh, that's a pointing pair going this way. And so now I can eliminate all these nines. And then this is a claiming pair. He already figured out that this was a claiming pair. So that these you know nines are no longer in these areas. And so when you have these two claiming pairs, uh, what you know is in the last block in this shoot, so in block seven, the nine has to be in one of these spots. And so you can eliminate those nines. And then he already figured out that the threes were limited to that spot. So if you go to the threes, you'll notice the threes are in the same two spots. This is basically a hidden pair of, of three and nine, right? And so this will help you move on and solve the rest of the puzzle. Uh, nice. I will put a link right now. There's another solve that Simon did where he kind of pointed out how these claiming pairs will really are like the key to solving expert Sudoku puzzles. Let's go back to the main solve. Okay, we're back. So Simon looks across row seven and notices, you know, two, four, five, six, the twos and fours actually are a naked pair here in column one and column seven. And so now this creates a five, six naked pair. So you can get rid of the two right there. After that, uh, he looks up and, and he can solve for the X wing. And the reason being is now since a 7 can't be here, and a 7 ha is here in column 3, the set, the, you know, a 7 has to be somewhere in column 1, in block 1, and the only place that can be is right in uh, row 2. So he's able to solve that 7. After solving the 7, the X-wing starts to come apart, because it solves the 7 there. Now there's only one place left for uh, an 8 in column one, right? Because this can't be an eight, that can't be an eight. So once you get that eight, that's no longer an eight. So we, now we know where the eights are for our X-wing. And they're going to be over here and up here in uh, row one, column three. So the X-wing solved, and then he moves on and focuses on the nines. And notices, okay, uh, since these nines are a pointing pair, I can solve that for a nine. And I can solve for this 5 and for that 9. After solving here, 5, 5, he sees the 5. So he, he creates, you know, pencil marks 5. Then he comes back up and he solves the rest of row 1. Gets that 6. After solving the 6, he's able to come across 6, 6, 6 here in column 1. And solve that for a 6. Solving this 6. He can see two sixes and a six across row eight, so he's able to solve that for a six. And then he can solve that naked triple that was in column six. 
come back and solve the 5. His next solve is he notices that right here, this is actually a naked single uh, 4. So he solves that, which allows him to solve the 2 and then the 4 and finish off row 7. After finishing off row 7, he then focuses on seeing where the force can go up here in block 6. And he comes back down and sees that, okay, there's only one place left for a 2, right? Because this 2 is coming across row 9, so he's able to solve that for a 2. And he's kind of focusing on column 9 now. But since he solved the 2, he's able to solve for the 9, which lets him solve over here for the 9 and 3, which helps him solve the rest of these candidates down here in rows 7 and 8. So he solves all of those candidates right there. After solving 7 8 there, you can see the 7 coming down, so he's able to solve the rest of these two cells, right? The 7 has to be in column 2, row 8, column 2, and then you can solve the 1 right there. After solving that 1, he moves him, he moves up uh, this chute, and he looks and says, okay, you know, where can a, uh, it finishes off column 3 by solving that for a 2. After he solves that for a 2, 2 and a 2, he sees this 2 coming up, okay, one place for a 2. Makes that a two. Uh, then he marks twos where they could be in in the rest of block four. So he marks those as twos. Uh, marks off these. Uh, and then he sees like these one four pairs. So he marks all these off. So that's a one four. That's a one four, and that's a one four. Right? There's only you know one four left here, one four left in this block. After marking the ones and fours, he comes across and goes, "Oh well, hey the ones." Since this one's coming up column 8, the ones are now a pointing pair. Since they're a pointing pair, ones have to be in block 3 across uh, row 2. This is no longer a 1. So they will solve that for a 4. Solve that for a 1. Solve that for a 4. So after solving this 4, he just marks the rest of these pairs. He looks up here, sees these two 8s, and goes, Oh, I can solve this for an 8, and I'm going to displace candidates, which is kind of genius, because if you're doing scenario notation and you can displace candidates, that means you can come back, uh, you'll be able to solve, right after you solve this cell for an 8 like he does, you'll be able to solve uh, other cells that where he displaced those candidates. So you can solve right away. But it was in this point, 16 cells remain, and Simon cracks the puzzle. It is all naked, hidden singles from here. So I'll show that. Uh, you can follow along with me um, as I fill in the rest of these candidates the way Simon did. Viewers who watch this said that Simon had a really smooth solving style. And he's teaching them so much. They're getting really popular at the time this video came out in February of 2020. Uh, most of the people talked about how they were finding the X-Wings and other advanced strategies after they watch these type of videos. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I put a link to the puzzle. Try it out. You know, if you're able to solve it okay. Or if you need to watch the video first. Also, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe to more hobbies. Don't miss any new content. I am moving on in March back to my two videos a week. Uh, don't worry, you'll still get content every week from me, and I'm excited, and I was happy to do this month of Sudoku. Thank you all so much for watching.